Well, I've been kicked out of my office. <laughs> I have some uh, family coming in, uh, standing with us from Boston, living out here, you know. And uh, yeah, so they kicked me out for about a week or two. What do you know? But no, I, it's all good. I tried to make it cozy. We're set up in my living room. It's all good. Love to everybody, Drop Nation. Everybody out there surfing the wave. Everybody out there trying to figure it out. Don't ask me for proof about anything. People keep trying to say, I need more proof that Jerusalem's in South America. Jerusalem is Jerusalem. There's about 200 videos on this channel. Most of them are over an hour long. And many of them are two, <laughs> two hours long. So that those babies are, are, are all over the place. You know what I'm saying? You can go ahead and dig on it. Don't ask me to reprove that or give you nothing else in these comments now you know unless you come correct and it's all good and we're having a dialogue but i ain't got time to keep proving stuff to individuals we dig it up we drop it you go get it it's there matter of fact it's all much of it is right here you click the links under here there's about 20 something links right here and i guarantee you're going to find more proof of what you're looking for but hey a lot of us just think we need more. What do you think? Do you think Jerusalem's in the Middle East? Or did they find a certain people here and put them in captivity here and take their land and take over their holy city the same way they always do? They take over the holy city, then they conquest. Every time they want to have a new empire, they take over the holy city. Then they conquest. What did they do in 1452? Papa Bull, dumb diverses, seized their fortresses, seized their city, put them into captivity perpetually, forever. Why would they do that? Because you have something they want. What did Columbus say? I'm coming to America for to seize the holy city. And people still want proof that the holy city's here. And in Columbus's writings in the Biblioteca de Columbina in Sevilla, Spain, he's saying, I'm coming to America to seize the Holy City in Mount Zion. That he's collecting the records from Granada. He's putting them together that are pointing to this Jerusalem here. And you need more, what, recordation from me? The links are here, man. Sister, brother. So just know, man, I'm not no genie. You can't rub my belly and out comes more proof. You're going to have to dig on it. You're going to have to get with it or get left on. Time's of an essence. We don't have all this sense of time, all this sense of time and space. It's just all about, it's all about a dance, man. And if you're going to do the dance, do the dance. And if you're going to break it down, break it all the way down. No fear. So we're going to make this, you know what I'm saying? We're going to make this, this static. We're going to make this static crumble. We're going to make it fall with a body blow. And that's vibration. You know, we're going to listen. So this is uh, chapter four. We're going to continue our reading in Exodus. I want to get back to it. Uh, my Sefer is in my office, so I just have my Tanakh. So we're going to get Exodus chapter four. And uh, I'll have the Sefer for chapter five. And, you know, we're going to dig on it as we continue to enjoy this pattern. Always come back home. Remember you always going to have your foundation. Even if we're in the pop of a, we're getting babies out, we're trying to understand, we're trying to be hijacked free, but it has to sink, and we're looking to make it sink. We know that our ancestors did not write this, right? Right? I mean, this particular translation of it, you understand? So they're using foundational legend from our ancestors to translate something really for them. They translated this for them over there, Right? Not for you and the indigenous people here. So the Papa Va gives you a another perspective from this hemisphere or from this side of the world, however you want to call it. You know what I mean? From from this world. <laughs> and you can comb through the hijacks that way. Or you can take what's coming in the uh Greek this and the this that over here. You can take what's coming out and being printed and put out for them here, over there. You know what I'm saying? So those two perspectives should sink. 
if you got the right babies out the bathwater. So love to everyone in Drop Nation trying to figure it out, having whatever day you have it, just taking some time for some drop. This is pretty quick. I'm just going to get Chapter 4 and, you know what I'm saying, let the Ruach flow. And then we're going to get right back into the uh, Kakshi Quail pop of uh, We're going to get into some new drop that uh, that King Uno on the beats, get into the root of it all. Just drop. I was just talking about this new, uh, this other this other book that was mentioned um, while we were reading um, in the uh, Annals of the Kakshi Quail. And it brought up another very significant book. And I said, anybody ever heard of this? Uh, Chalam, whatever it is. And uh, this brother sent me two PDFs, not just one translation, but the other translation. And we're going to, you know, stick with that DG Britain. Um, you know what I'm saying? He, he seems to be the go-to, uh, you know, most hijack free from what I'm seeing so far, translators of this uh, Animal of the Coxie Quail, as well as this other, this other book. And I believe our, tra no, no, our translation of the Pop of Us coming from someone else. So we're, you know, combing through it. We're going to put it together. Got the Tanakh, we are in Exodus, put the babies to sleep for the fourth time tonight. We played tennis, it was fun, it wore me out, and now we're going to get to it, man. So a lot to everybody that's doing the same thing, man, just leveling up on their families, you know what I'm saying, having order in their house, you know, putting it together. Love to our women, you know what I'm saying, that's making a house a home. Love to Chef Candy, that man, you know, she's been nonstop, you know, making this transition smooth, you know, as you guys know, I've been moving, so... You know what I'm saying without without a a, a, a true uh, soldier by your side, a true warrior by your side, it's very difficult to get these things accomplished. So love to the women that's holding us down, always. All right, so let's get into the Shema, Shema, chapter four, Exodus chapter four. This is a little small print here, so I gotta like dig all the way in on this. So I hope I don't get too too upon y'all, but we're getting cozy, so it's all good. But Moses spoke up and said, what if they do not believe me and do not listen to me? Ain't, the, ain't that the first thing you got to say? You know, when you say, man, I got to, how am I going to get this done? What if they don't believe me? What if they don't listen? What if my family ain't hearing me? What if it ain't worth it to them? All right. You know what I'm talking about. These doubts are real. We all have them. You know what I mean? So. But Moses, Moshe, spoke up and said, What if they do not believe me and do not listen to me, but say, The Lord did not appear to you. We don't believe you. You know what I'm saying? You ain't nothing, Moses. The Lord said to him, What is it that, what is that in your hand? And he replied, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. He cast it on the ground, and it became a snake. Let me tell you how this syncs up. I was just having a conversation with my brother Uno. We was talking about this serpent, you know, snake situation and, and really the indigenous truth of it, you know, not just our perspective that we've been, you know, put on in Christianity or even um, the commission perspective as we see all these different things. You know, what is this true indigenous meaning pre-hijack of this serpent, this snake situation? What does it truly symbolize? Does it symbolize? symbolize Satan or is that what we've been taught in our religion that serpent Satan serpent Satan these people are wrong about everything we typically have to flip everything they teach us so as we serve the wave we can't be afraid to do that so I'm looking at this serpent I'm trying to see it from different angles we're all trying to figure it out and then uh, you know something kind of hit us and we're like you know Moses you know has his rod that turns into a snake now what's his interpretation of a snake does Moshe have the same interpretation of a snake than the Christian does that says the snake is the devil? Why would Moses' staff turn into a devil? Why would that frequency come out of Moshe who, I mean, you know what I'm saying, line him up. He probably has got to be top five, top three most righteous. I mean, the law is named after the law of Moses, right? So why would he be dealing with demons, right? So why did his staff turned into a snake what did that snake represent to Moshe hijack free is he dealing with some witchcraft because he's talking because his snake turned it if I had a staff right here 
and I put it down and it turned into a snake, most of y'all would think I got some voodoo or going, you know, going crazy, right? But Moses did it, right? The law of Moses. So what does that mean in the, the, you know, to the initiated, to those that understand the, the, the true interpretation of these particular symbols, not someone translating it. Oh, this means snake. So I'm going to write S N A K E snake serpent in English serpent. I'm saying they're getting it from what pictures, cliche diagrams, right? So what does it mean? What is the symbol? What is it symbolizing? Is it symbolizing what the metaphysical, you know what I'm saying, uh, brothers and sisters be kicking? You know what I'm saying? Is it symbolizing, uh, you know, just this other, you know, this, this, this energy, this connection, this, this, this? Is it symbolizing wisdom? Is it symbolizing knowledge? What's the symbol? What's the understanding behind that? You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, we got the framer and the shaper. Some, some would say, oh, okay, you got the two hemispheres of the brain. Left brain, right brain, right brain creativity. All right, that's your wisdom, that's your creativity, that's your framer. You got your shaper, you got your law, you got your, you know, here to here. Here's your law, I'm putting it down. We have our nuclear family, we have a house. Who decorates the house? I mean, for the most part, who puts it together, right? So the man, you know, and, and you know, we, we acquire whatever the capital, whatever we need to get this house and our women nest, a woman nest and makes a house a home. So when you walk into the house, just like the brother Uno Kate, you walk into the male and female energy. When you have that balance, when the house is in order and the children are listening and the, and the father's presence is felt, the law is put down. And his law is connected to the law of hey hey the law that always exists, the existence of not killing, not stealing, honoring your father and your mother. Remember, your law is to honor your father and your mother. But we're not taught about our mother. We're only taught about this energy, this, this shaper, the word, right? The word, the shape, the vibration, shapes. What about our mother? That's your wisdom. Wisdom. Doesn't wisdom cry out for her sons? Don't her sons cry out for wisdom? Don't you cry out for wisdom? So you cry out for your mother. But your mother ain't dealing with you unless you are in order of your father's house, his law, his word, his vibration. Right? Let's get to it. So Moses got the staff, right? This rod turns into a snake. All right, so we're trying to get the indigenous truth. That's why we're connecting it. So he said he uh, he cast it. Okay, what is in your hand? And he said a rod. Verse three. He said he he said cast it on the ground. He cast it on the ground, and it became a snake. And Mo Moses recoiled from it. Then the Lord Heya said to Moses, Put out your hand and grasp it by the tail. So first Moses is like, whoa, you know, freaked him out, right? Wouldn't it freak you out? It wasn't the snake probably that freaked him out, right? It was the fact that the stick in his hand just turned into a snake. So don't get it twisted thinking that he got freaked out because, oh, he thought a snake was evil. He just saw a rod, a stick turn into a snake. And that made him recoil like, whoa. And most I said, don't trip, grab it by the tail. He put out his hand and seized it and it became a rod in his hand. And it turned back into his staff, his, his rod. That they may believe that hey, uh, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Yaakov did appear to you. So it was a sign. Now, why would his rod turn into a snake? It could turn into anything. Was it an evil intention that this thing turned into a snake? It could turn into anything. Did the Most High put something evil in the hand of Moses, whose name the law resounds? It's the law of Moses. <clears throat> in the high heavens, they still call it the law of Moshe. It's his, that was his gift when he went up there, when you read the revelations of Moses. Is that the law is going to be in your name. 
So this Moshe, who knows all the secrets of the law in and out, he understands the vibration of it. He's holding a rod, his special rod, that turns into a snake and then turns back into a rod once he touches it and seizes it by the tail and controls his snake. Right? Are we dealing with the pineal, the pine cone, the inner eye, whatever you want to call it? Are we, what, how are we dealing with this? Because whatever grid we are on is electricity. Whatever grid we are on is vibration. Whatever grid we are on is frequency and you have been hijacked. How do you unlock it? How do you get out of the illusion of seclusion? How do you get off the, res the plantation reservation? How do you get to freedom? What, by paperwork? No one else asked me about paperwork, about doing paperwork with these people that came to you with a sword and you want to go back to them with paperwork. Wake up, people. We got to stop the silliness, right? So how do you get back? It has to be energy. Where do you get your energy? You get out of their cities and go home. When you do that, you'll realize you are a slave because they will try to stop you. They will say, we need our slaves in the cities to work. Now, it was all good when you were just going to school or going to work and going home. But once you say, I'm not participating, I'm going to go be an Indian again. Indio, indigo. I'm going to go be a child of the Most High again. I'm going to follow my law, statutes, my commandments, and I'm going to, to, to be one with my mother again, with wisdom, with the earth. Then, then see what? They'll say, oh, okay, well, we had you in captivity when you were stupid. Now that you, the spirit of stupor has been raised, we must put you in cages and encampments, in internment camps. That's what the FEMA stuff comes in at. That's why we keep the, the, the survival drop on deck so we can learn about the wilderness as fast as possible so that we can be indigenous again. It was meant for us to return. It was always meant for us to return. And that's what we do. So let's get it. So he put his hand out and seized it, and it became a rod in his hand that they may believe that Heya, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, did appear to you. Then Heya said to him further, Put out your hand into your put your hand into your bosom. He put his hand into his bosom and when he took it out his hand was encrusted with snowy scales so what are these snowy scales right we read in certain translations where his hand turned white but now we see his hand turned into snowy scales so I guess we can envision that as white snowy scales a scaly hand a leprous hand Either way, his hand appears to have turned into some form of leprous at some point in time. Leprous. So he put his hand into his bosom, then he took it out. He took it out of his bosom, and when he took it out, his hand was encrusted with snowy scales. Now, again, I'm coming out the Tanakh. Right? So we got these snowy scales. And he said, put your hand back into your bosom. He put it back, his hand back into his bosom, and when he took it out of his bosom, there again, like the, there it was again, like the rest of his body. So it wasn't snowy scales anymore. Let's keep going. And if they do not believe you or pay heed to the first sign, they will believe the second. Remember, there's always a second. There's always confirmation, validation. All right. And if they are not convinced by both these signs and still do not heed you take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground and it the water that you take from the Nile will turn to blood on the dry ground all right now um, a sister dropped an amazing drop uh, with the comparisons of the Nile and the Mississippi River how they both run north and south uh, they're both ancient, you know what I'm saying? They both have given life to the, you know, they're, they're both geographically in the same location. Um, you, you know, Egypt is here. And they pretty much put another image of Egypt there. So when you're here now, think Mississippi River and look that up. 
All right? <laughs> so, I mean, this ain't play play. It's out there if your eyes are ready to see it. If you want to keep thinking that the origin is over there and that Egypt's over there and all this kind of stuff like that and ignore a uh, wonderful um, sequence. These things are sequence, man. When you go back into these drops and you see how this stuff has come out, there's a sequence to this. A lot of people are surfing away because they recognize patterns and sequences, the vibration, the feeling. They know when they're being hijacked. They know when they're being freed. So no one is claiming to know everything or be able to prove all these things. But now we can at least have fresh eyes, a fresh perspective, and not be in a, you know, uh, bombarded in a community that we cannot grow in. That we have to keep saying, oh, but my elder taught me 40 years ago that the name is this, or that this is this, or that 20 years ago this. Either it's Daniel 12 or that. Either knowledge is abounding at the end or that. If it wasn't the end 50 years ago, 100 years ago, then knowledge was not abounding yet. That there was still a seal. And do you believe that seal is still on you now? Or has that Baktun ended, that Maya account ended, are you waking up from your slave vibration? You should be able to surf the wave and recognize a hijack when you feel it. Not just see it, but feel it. So if they're not convinced by both of these signs, take some water from the now and pour it on the dry ground and it, the water that you take from the now or Mississippi River, will turn to blood on the dry ground. But Moses said to Heya, please, I have never been a man of words, either in times past or now that you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And Heya said to him, who gives man speech? Who makes him dumb or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, Heya? Now go, I will be with you as you speak and will instruct you what, you what to say. But he said, please make someone else your agent. Then uh, the Lord became angry with Moses and he said, there is your brother Aaron, the Levite. He, I know, speaks readily. Even now he is setting out to meet you and he will be happy to see you. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with you and with him as you speak. And tell both of you what to do, and he shall speak for you to the people. All right, so that's very interesting. Aaron spoke for Moses to the people. That's a picture that you don't really get, especially in the movies or anybody else talking about it, right? Aaron spoke for Moses to the people, yet the most, the most High still used Moses to instill the law. It was still his vessel, but Moses was still given the purity of tongue to speak pure from no, you know what I'm saying, a, a direct energy flow from the Creator to the people. I will be with both of you and with him at, at and with him as you speak and tell both of you what to do. Verse uh, 16, and he shall speak for you to the people. Thus he shall serve as your spokesman, all right? With you playing the role of God, to, with you playing the role of God to him. I mean, I'm just coming out the Tanakh. So this is a very interesting, you know, translation of it. So thus he shall serve as your spokesman with you playing the role of God to him. And take him, and take with him you this rod with which you shall perform the signs. This is the rod that turned into the serpent, right? So, this serpent, uh, you know, the serpent, whatever the vibration is, whatever, whatever it symbolizes, you know, what I'm saying all these things, is within this rod. This rod did not turn into anything else but a serpent. So what's Moses' understanding of that? What's Aaron's understanding of that? Why did the Mosai make it that? 
if it is all evil the way we're taught today. So we need to understand, you know, overstand, understand, right? Moses went back to his father-in-law, Jetha, and said to him, let me go back to my kinsmen in Egypt and see how they are faring. And Jethro said to Moses, go in peace. The Lord said to Moses in Midian, go back to Egypt for all the men who sought to kill you are dead. So Moses took his wife and sons and mounted them on an ass and went back to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of, of God with him. And the Lord said to Moses, when you return to Egypt, see that you perform perform uh, before Pharaoh all the marvels that I have put within your power. I, however, will stiffen his heart so that he would not let the people go. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my firstborn son. No. Jesus is his firstborn son. You ever wonder why the Jesus story correlates with the story of the indigenous Americans? He was crucified. We were crucified. What's the difference between the ass whooping and kicking he got supposedly in that story and our children being ripped apart and put on frying pans and us being mutilated genitals cut off or women hung upside down vinegar poured inside of inside of them all the treacherous ways they ate us they ate our babies what's worse that or this jesus crucifixion story of this one man that's supposed to save everybody else who's not being saved by the real creator so now they must have hope in the son of the creator and worship the son of the creator on what? The first day of the week, which corresponds to the first heaven. As the first day of the week relates to the first heaven, the second day of the week relates to the second heaven, third day, third heaven, all the way up into the seventh day of the week, the Shabbat, the Sabbath, which is the seventh heaven. And when you vibrate on the Shabbat, you vibrate in the frequency of the throne of Heia in the seventh heaven, the vibration, way above the firmament. You're not worshiping on Sunday, worshiping on the first day of the week, Babylonian day of the week, underneath the firmament in the first heaven, which is the stars and all that, right? They worship their planets and stars, so-called, underneath the firmament, since they are all underneath the firmament, and they never vibrate above the firmament. So you'll always be in 440 hertz, when you're worshiping on Sunday. And then they say, yeah, he was crucified and ignore your crucifixion. You Negro, you're just supposed to get over it. Get over it. Stop race baiting. Stop remembering history. Get over it. But remember Jesus and what he did and what he died for. Everybody, right? Even he said, I died not for this world, <laughs> but for the people in it. What world? Did he know about all the world? Was he doing it for earth? Or was world, as it's translated as world, does that not represent the world of Israel? His firstborn. What did he know outside of that? What people is he dying for that he knew outside of where he was at? So now they say, well, he died for, Jesus loves the world. He's not talking about earth. He's not talking about China and Russia. He wasn't in China and Russia. He's talking about the people. What people? The people he said, what? And, and, and hijack, hijack Matthew. What did he say in Matthew, what, 15 or something like that? I only came here for Israel. Lady, leave me alone. S S Samarian woman, leave me alone about your kid. And then what did he do? He blessed the kid, but he didn't save her. He just said, all right, cool. I I I'll help your daughter or whatever the case is. But all right, I'll hook you up because you know you ain't shit. She said, I'm a dog, and I should eat the crumbs from the table, too. He said, I'm not going to give you the crumbs of the children. What children? You. No, he died for everybody. No, he said, I'm not going to give you, dog, woman, the crumbs of the table for the children. I'm going to leave it for the children. So if you want to keep your hijack, at least know what he says. And know that Jesus is Lucifer. And even Lucifer is in order. And even Lucifer knows that certain things are just for the children. 
that a lot of what you're reading, you're reading directly from Lucifer talking to your ass. And he ain't even lying to you. He's saying you got to come through me. You will have to go through Lucifer to get to the bottomless pit. You, that is your God of the bottomless pit. That is your Apollo. That is your Abaddon. That is your Apollyon. That is your Iesus, your Zeus. That is your son. Son of what? Son of Saturn. Son of Saturn? Yes, Jupiter is the son of Saturn. Son of Satan. Saturn. Son. Christos is the son of who? Satan. Jesus, yeah. And he ain't even lying. He's telling you, I'm going to come back. Apollo, Apollyon, Abaddon in Revelations. I'm coming back like a star falling from heaven. And I'm going to get the keys to the bottomless pit. And he'll have the keys. And guess what? He'll say, you got to come. I told you, you're going to have to come through me as a Christian. You had faith in me, right? So now you have to come through me to get to the bottomless pit. You better get out that hijack. And you better go home to your old ways. You don't have a new testament until you have a new testimony. Your new testimony comes with your permanent freedom out of your captivity. That is your new testament. That is your new uh, covenant. Not even a testament. You know what I'm saying? Get all that language out. That's your new covenant. Your old covenant will always be. <laughs> your new is a refining of the old. The most high ain't changing. So his new covenant is just saying, just like I made a covenant with you coming out of Egypt, I'm making a covenant with you again coming out of Egypt. And I told you, you won't have to go back to this bondage, but you do have to go back to this bondage because you ain't getting it. So I said, all right, but I'm going to take you on ships this time. And where do we go from here? Back to bondage. So we went from here, from here. <laughs> On ships like Deuteronomy 28 to bondage again not just a literal Egypt remember Egypt is a new word it is a Greek word right so it only symbolizes bondage and bondage only we went back on ships to what Assyria we went back on ships to Africa we went back on ships to Portugal and Spain we went back on ships even to North America they were putting us on, on, on ships from Mississippi to, to, to Florida. We was taking ships to go to the Caribbean. So just because you see ships, don't keep thinking you came from Africa. They used the ships and he took you on ships back to Egypt. What? Back to what? Illinois? From this, from, from, from Mexico to Illinois, you took a ship. Get Africa out your head. Get Assyria out your head. You're from here. Get your land back. Vibrate with your mountains. Vibrate with your trees. Get out the cities. You see the tanks rolling in. It's time to go. You know what I'm saying? That's just reality. You know what I'm saying? You could be in a house, but you'll never own it. You'll never own it. So all you can do is say, okay, well, I ain't going to own this, but I'm just going to rent the shit out of this until, you know, I know it's time to make our smooth exit wherever you got to make it. And that's our business, right? And you got to make yours. And some of us are going to make it together. Some of us are going to make it apart and come together later. Or not. Let the most high work. And don't be afraid. But you got to know the kingdoms within you. So that you're at the right vibration. And you know the most high can never separate from that which is in order. So you can't be destroyed in order. And your physical destruction is not your destruction. So we are here for the everlasting. Let's get the rest of this. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus say, th thus says, hey, uh, Israel is my firstborn, not Jesus, Israel. You are his firstborn. He is coming back directly for you and to you. Thus says, hey, uh, Israel is my firstborn son. Verse 23, I have said to you, let my son go pharaoh let my son my firstborn son go what are we saying to pharaoh this time let us go we are prisoners of war according to the papal bull Dumbnight verses 1452 signed by pope nicholas v we prisoners of war man let us go what 
my firstborn son, and I have said to you, let my son go. That he may worship me, get back to his commandments on his land, right? Yet you refuse to let him go. Now I will slay your firstborn son. Wow. At a night encampment on the way, Heia encountered him and sought to kill him. So Zipporah took a flint and cut off her son's foreskin and touched his legs with it, saying, You are truly a bridegroom of blood to me. And when he let him alone, she added, A bridegroom of blood because of the circumcision. So she did a quick conversion. She said, Look, we with you. I'm with you. Don't kill me. <laughs> uh, Heia said to Aaron, Go to meet Moses in the wilderness. No, in the cities of Egypt, we should go meet up like fools and be slaughtered. Is that your plan? Protest? Fight in the streets? You go to the wilderness. It's game over because they need you here. You weaken your opponent by simply not participating. Your participation is what keeps you in captivity. Period. But you have to release those shackles of your own mind, your own heart, your own eyes, and release the hijack so you see that you are a prisoner of war currently in captivity according to the dumb diverses Papua Bull 1452 that is still in effect on your ass where it was said for you to be put in perpetual servitude for you to be slaughtered <laughs> All the permission was given to the kings of Spain and Portugal for you to be slaughtered and for everything to be stolen from you and for you to be put in perpetual forever captivity and bondage. Click the links below. Hey, it said to Moses, go to meet Aaron, go to meet Moses in the wilderness. And he went and met him at the mountain of God and he kissed Moses. Moses told Aaron about all the things that Aya had committed to him and all the signs about which he had instructed him. Then Moses and Aaron went and assembled all the elders of the Israelites. Aaron repeated all the words that, the, that Aya had spoken to Moses and he performed the signs in the sight of the people. And the people were convinced when they heard that Aya had taken note of the Israelites and that he had seen their plight. They bow low in homage when they realize the Most High remembered and he knows that they are in captivity. And what are you going to do when you know? Not when you're hearing it from some people debating it, but when you know that the Most High has not forgotten. Right now I can tell you, but what are you going to do when you know, when we all know? We're all going to bow down and what? And when they heard that Haya had taken note of the Israelites, had remembered them, had taken note. I know, I remember the covenant. I remember the covenant with Abraham and David. I remember. And that he might, that he had seen their plight, their destruction, their slaughter. What do you think the indigenous people are hoping their creator, you know what I'm saying, what? That he takes note that he has seen their plight. You, Negro, are the indigenous, so what are you hoping? You have no land, you have no things, you have no resources, no capital. Everybody hates you. Nobody wants you to claim being indigenous because they know that they can't. And because you can, it makes everyone feel uncomfortable because they know they're not on their own land and it makes them research and find their own lands and their own history and it makes them uncomfortable with the uncovered. And they look at you with jealousy and envy. And they want to slaughter us just for remembering. After they slaughtered us the first time, for us waking back up and remembering, they want to slaughter us again. And what do we hope? When they heard that Heia had taken note of the Israelites and that he had seen their plight, we hope he sees us. I mean, what's important for a husband and wife, what, to see each other, to communicate, to see. 
What do you hope for your creator for him to see? What do you want from wisdom for her to see? You hijack free. To know that they can rest as a nuclear house again. That you can have all the wisdom and that you can be in order and have everything in this playground that the creator has designated for you and you only. Yes, everyone can play on the playground, but no, it does not belong to everybody. Why? Pharaoh, show Pharaoh all the marvels that I have put within your power. I, however, will stiffen his heart so that he would not let the people go. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says, hey, uh, Israel is my firstborn son. I love y'all. This is Exodus chapter 4. We will be back. Thanks for being patient with the setup. And uh, hopefully, you know what I'm saying, we can keep getting cozy. The drop can't stop. The drop won't stop. All praise. Hey, hey, most high power.